So you've gotten yourself into a relationship with somebody that you believe to be a love avoidant. And in that relationship, you don't know if they actually care about you. Well, in today's video, I'm going to give you five ways to tell whether or not your avoidant cares. Thank you for sticking around. If this is your first time viewing me, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel by clicking that subscribe button and ringing that bell so you're notified for the newest content. Before I get into the content, if you want my help personally, reach out to me on my website at www.fruitfulseeds with a z at the end .com and leave me an email no longer than two to three paragraphs long. Thank you. In today's video, I'm going to give you five ways to tell whether or not your avoidant cares about you. And the very first way that you can tell is they give you their time. So avoidance tend to be no nonsensical. You know, they don't want to give anything or anybody their time or their energy if it doesn't serve them any purpose. If it isn't uh, something that's worth having or, or worth being with, they won't do it. Which is why when you ask an avoidant person, you, know, you may be hanging out with them and saying, you know, you really don't show me love this way or show me love that way. I don't know if you actually care about me. And they'll usually just respond like, that's silly. I'm here with you, right? This is my way of showing you love. They won't. They may not go and elaborate that way, but that's what they're uh, hinting to, I'm giving you my time, I'm here, I'm with you. That means I actually care about you because my friends, they complain about me not wanting to be around and not giving them their time, not giving them my time. So if they're with you and they're giving you their time, that means that that's a really good indication that they actually care about you, they're putting you as a priority, and they're, um, they're moving towards you know having something a little bit more substantial with you. The second thing that they'll do is they'll offer their space. You know, I've heard too many times where people have moved in with somebody that's a love avoidant. You know, they moved into their house, you know, because they, they typically don't want to move into your space with you. They would much rather you move in with them. So if you moved in with them, which I would say is a huge no-no, you know, if you are going to decide to move in with somebody that you know is a love avoidant, be prepared for things to get real rocky and for things to fall apart unless you lay out a good plan on how you guys are going to cohabitate and have a clear vision on what space is going to be yours, what's going to be theirs, uh, what quality of time is going to look like. Um, because most of the time they may not want to be around you or under you so much. You know, when you guys were dating and, you know, going through the courtship stage, sure, they felt like they had to be there, entertain you. But when you move in with them, or they give you their space and they invite you over. You know, that's a huge indication that, hey, I care about you. I want to make this work, or this is me offering up um, what I need to offer up in order to make you feel comfortable and make you feel safe. But you need to do it in the correct way. All right, I'm just gonna reiterate that again because nothing can make uh, an anxious and avoidant dynamic fall apart quicker than you moving in with them. So make sure that you do it the correct way. But if they're offering it to you, they care about you. The third way that they will show that they love you or that they care about you, they will give you money. They will give you resources. The things that they have, you know, worked hard to get, you know, finances and or, you know, if it's something that they had like an old, an old TV or a, a table or if they went out and bought something new and they offer it to you, what they have like hey before i sell this before i donate this is this something that you want is this something that you can you feel like you can benefit from and instead of being selfish and saying i'm just going to go ahead and sell it they're offering it to you because they want to improve the quality of your life and show you that hey i care about you i want you to have nice things i want you to be um comfortable in your living quarters too so they will give you that they will give you money and they will give you resources but if it's somebody that you know they feel on a fence about, you know, they'll think more along the lines of, and this is for just from what, people that I've talked to, along, along the lines of, well, they can they can do for themselves. Like they'll they'll be able to go out and find, you know, a TV off eBay or off, um, Facebook Marketplace. So uh, there's really no need for me to offer it to them. But if they do that, it's a really good sign that they care about you. The fourth thing that they would do is they will come back to an argument or a disagreement that you guys had. Now, this is when they're starting to move more towards becoming more secure, maybe even secure with you, or if they're becoming more secure in a way that they attach to people in general, they will um, come back to things that 
were you know uncomfortable conversations that were uncomfortable they'll bring it back up maybe they'll take their time come back to you and they won't let you stew and won't let your anxiety get too out of hand and they'll come back to the table and then talk about it i see this more with um with men who are avoidance and they're trying to become more secure and they want to uh, communicate better with their spouses and they want or their girlfriends and they want to be able to show up better they'll come back to the table and say hey can we sit down and talk about this can we can we resolve this issue i don't want you angry with me i don't want you i don't want things to be weird so they'll come back and they'll show that they actually care and those are the times where people get hooked you know when they see the potential in their avoidant spouse or their partner they see the potential in them. they are able to uh not just sweep things under the rug, not make you feel like you're not important and like you don't matter. That's what keep people who are dating them hooked. The fifth thing that they would do, um, I'm going to pause because I'm going to go ahead and plug my book here. If you haven't picked up my book, Fruitful Seeds, How I Planted My Seeds for Growth Throughout Separation and Divorce, this is on Amazon. That link is in the description below. Uh, it's five bucks. It's my story about how I got into the life and relationship coaching business. So the last thing, they will uh, apologize. Now this may seem like common sense, like something that you, you should already know, like you shouldn't even have to talk about, but for them, apologizing makes them feel shameful. And now I'm not trying to prove, trying to make it seem like I know everything, but this is just from what I've learned from people I've talked to and from experiences that people have had. Well, let's not forget, you know, the avoidant attachment style is an insecure attachment style, which means they already feel like they can't bring anything to the table. or don't have anything to bring to the table in a relationship and that they don't know how to operate inside the relationship. So when you bring something up and you demand an apology, it's going to be really tough for them to do that because it's probably going back to when they were always being blamed and always had to take the responsibility for the things that they did. And it's making them feel inadequate. I know there's going to be people in the comment section like, yeah, narcissists don't apologize either. Sure, they don't either. Narcissistic tendencies, it isn't attachment style exclusive, all right? You can overlap. You can have an anxious attachment style, but also be a narcissist. You know, it, it, there's an overlap. So don't continue to compare them to people that are, you know, have that character flaw. You know, attachment styles is an attachment style. Character flaw is a character flaw. You know, that's that's a whole nother avenue. So um, so that's all I have for you. And if you found this video of any value, please like, comment, and share. Reach out to me on my other social media accounts. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook is I am Coach Court. TikTok is I.M.CoachCourt. Thank you, guys. I will talk to you soon.